Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 100. When you consider we've 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 done 250 shows. That our last episode last week was episode 250 by the way. To start our Thank you. To to start our our 12th year and uh so if you add 250 and 100, that's three. That's 350 weeks that we've been doing this show. Yeah, baby. We must be doing something right. Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by. VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. So, we got lots of stuff going on here. Um, you know, we were at VO Atlanta last week, and I think you've got mm -hmm. some video from that. But, uh, you know, we're here to talk about home voiceover studios. And why do we talk about home voiceover studios? Because clearly, nobody seems to understand them, especially if you're new to the business or you've been a voice actor for a good long time. But you always went into somebody else's studio. You were talent. Yeah. Um, I was There's talent. A lot of misinformation that is being <laughs> spread oh, and God. confusing people like crazy. Yeah, and we want to straighten it out. We don't want to give you misinformation. We want to give you the stuff that we know works. And what works? It's different for everybody. I'm going to talk about that a little later on uh, when mm -hmm. we finish with your tech update. Uh, the fact is, we know what's happening. We've seen everything. We, at least we think we have until we've seen something we haven't seen before. And then we get a question we haven't gotten before. Um, and of course, trying equipment that we haven't tried before and seeing if it really works to help mm -hmm. your workflow as a voice actor. So where do you go for all that help? Well, you can work with either one of us. Uh, if you want to work with George and have him teach you what it takes to build a really good studio, where do they go? You head over to George, the dot tech and you can work with me and a bunch of others actually now, including Dan. Um, there is a wide, wide array of services available to you now. And if you go over there at georgethe.tech and look in the services area, you'll notice there's a lot in there, right? That's because we have services specific to different softwares, right? So if you are an Adobe Audition user, you can book time with one of our team members who is a pro at using Adobe Audition. Um, and you'll see their schedule and be able to book time with them whenever suits your schedule. Um, it's really amazing to have such a, a great team of people available to, to help you out, as well as all of our webinar content. And next month, Reaper is coming up. Uh, we're going to be teaching Reaper for those who really want to get complicated. <laughs> so anyway, that's us over at georgethe.tech. And meanwhile... Dan's got his home on the web over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, we got lots of cool stuff over there. You know, my philosophy, which, you know, I can go on about forever. Everything is physical. But we also have the Specimen Collection Cup there. And if you want to have your audio analyzed, send it to me. Uh, $25, I will give you your audio, a very thorough analysis. See if it's up to snuff. Uh, and if it's not, we'll make it snuffable. I guess that's one way to put it. Um, and uh, I, all you have to do is go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. And, uh, and if you want to work with me and get a consultation on how to build your studio or fix something, you can go over there and contact me directly. So go do that. Well, okay, so we're going to start off our 100th show. How much has changed over 100 episodes of this? I think my mustache has gotten a lot whiter. Uh, yeah, well, we, yeah, we all have more gray, that's for sure. And there's there's more tech uh, coming out all the time with more different colored LED lights on it. But really, a good studio mic, good acoustics, and good performance 
That's about 90%, and that 90% hasn't really changed. <laughs> yeah, really. really. Hasn't. All right. So what do you got in your tech update this week? I think we're talking with starting off with something that somebody was asking about. Um, I believe. I, well, the first thing in my tech update, uh, yeah, was is is the is a product from Centrance called the Passport VO. And so what this thing is, is an audio interface that, well, I mean, to be completely straight with you, was really truly designed for voiceover actors. I mean, I, I'm saying it out loud right now, and I almost have to pinch myself. I've been wanting to help design and bring to, bring to life an audio interface that's really designed for voiceover acting for many, many years. I've just found it to be a, a, an area of pro audio that's been woefully underserved. Um, our friend Harlan Hogan has done a fantastic job of trying to serve the industry in so many different ways, from the Porta Booth, the VO1A microphone, the voiceover headphones, which actually I'm using now, and I really, in this context, doing live is it. These are act, I like, I like the way I sound better than I do on my buyers. Really? Yes. Oh, that's saying a lot. In in live performance, in playback, I have different thoughts, but in performance, like we are now, broadcast streaming. I'm liking these the way I sound. It, it it definitely makes me feel clear and clean and present. But the point is, is that there's nothing, there just hasn't been anything out there that's really got a lot of nuanced features that suit the voiceover user. And let's be honest, like a lot of you that are beginners may not need something that has the level of flexibility and complexity of this guy, the, 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 the Passport VO. It's called Passport because it was a co-developed uh, venture between um, the Pro Audio Suite podcast crew, the four of us, and Michael Goodman of Centrance. And we came together over a few months. We surveyed our, our everybody that we could get a hold of to tell us what you're looking for. And at the end, this is essentially what all of you asked for. At least the top 60%. <laughs> this is what was the most voted on in terms of features, as well as one or two features that maybe nobody asked for because they didn't even occur to them. So we have a few curveballs in there. But one of those things is the record channel two source switch. There's this little button at the very bottom. It's a black switch. It's going to allow you to choose what you record on channel two. Channel two is like this unused inter input that nobody uses because... Your mic's plugged into channel one, and you're recording a mono track most of the time. What could we do with channel two then? <laughs> it's like a hidden feature. This lets you choose. You can have channel two be a safety track where it records 12 dB lower, so you have some safety margins before clipping. It could be what actually is plugged into mic two, which makes it work now like a Scarlet 2i2 or any two-channel interface. Or it can be used to record what comes back from communications. And that means you are now able to do podcast production and record the caller on Zoom or Source Connect. Or you can just use it to record your coach. You know, you get coached on Zoom all the time. You want to capture what the coach is saying. Flick that switch to comms and you're recording your coach or whoever's on the remote end. So just a lot of tools that we want to make sure are easy to exploit for voiceover. I don't want this to be too much of an infomercial right now. We're going to have time to do that more next week. But, or actually, when, by the time you guys are seeing this in replay this week, this week is really when this product is supposed to be starting on its pre-sale. So I'll just wrap it up here by saying stay tuned. Uh, watch uh, the ProAudioSuite.com website for more information. It will be actually on sale on the Centrance website in their store, and you'll be able to start buying it next week, or actually for those watching it live next week, for those watching the replay this week. <laughs> and it's going to be $6.99, and we have to sell 100 units up front in order to get this thing produced. Guess so I got to buy one. <laughs> I know there's so many of us I would like to give one to. <laughs> like, there ain't no givies, givies this time. We have to all buy one. It's, it's a group effort to make this thing exist, and uh, we're really proud of it. So anyway, that's that's the Passport VO, and uh, if you want to know more about it, well, just let us know. We'll we'll fill you in, um, and uh, pay, stay tuned at theproaudiosuite.com. 
All right. Coming up uh, in my queue here. Um, oh, one more thing. Oh, my gosh, if I hadn't said this. If you saw this on the show, if you do decide to buy one of these units, please use VOBS when you check out. It won't change the price, but what it will do is let Sendrance know you saw it here, and then you will be and by doing so, you will be supporting us, the show. You'll be supporting the show by using VOBS coupon code if you do pre-sale buy one. So thank you in advance. Um, coming up next, also the Roadcaster Pro 2 is now physically in my studio, and it's actually what we're what I'm using tonight to do the show. Now it's so funny that on the heels of my uh, the product I've helped design, I'm talking about another product. Both products are about the same price. Almost, well, they are the same price. They're both six hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> and if you look at them on paper, you go, "Wait a minute, why is this thing also six ninety nine? How is what?" Why is this little simple basic analog portable thing six ninety nine? And why is this super complicated, covered in LED lights and touch screens also six ninety nine? Well, the Roadcaster Pro Two is clearly targeted to production of voiceover, of uh, uh, really pro podcasting, podcasting and live streaming. Yeah. Would love to four people in the same room at the same time, with the ability to add more people coming in remotely, all in one live show. And it can be live recorded. It can be live streamed. It can be recorded multi track and it can be recorded multi-track internally to the unit. It has a record button right on the unit. Um, very clever. Dan's been using one on his end of the studio, the original version, for quite a long time. And the new one just takes everything that the original one had and takes it to 11. It's got more microphone preamp gain, way more. Um, it's got flexible faders that you can choose what into signal comes up on which fader. It's got um, better routing for your headphones and your studio monitors. It... It takes everything that if you had the first one, you said, it would be nice if, and now this one has it. It's crazy. So um, it's an impressive piece of kit. Does a voiceover actor need it? No. If they made a version half the price, half the size, with half the features, but all the stuff that I like, then I would say go buy that. Yeah. But Looks they like didn't. And they yeah. won't, and that's why we made the Passport VO. <laughs> <laughs> well, both have a workflow for voiceover now, the 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 yeah. the the, uh, the Procaster is really designed for podcasting. But the first time I saw it, it was like this would be very nice for voiceover and for the other things that I do in teaching and webinars and mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But yeah, if the you new do one things like, beyond voiceover and you are doing other things, other types of production, voice, you know, live streams, webinars, pro, uh, teaching, podcasting, then the 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 Rodecaster is quite a piece of kit. Again, it, it's got three more mic preamps than most people would need. It has sound effect pads that you don't really need but are fun. Uh, you know, it's got all these bells and whistles on it that make it fun to play with. But at the end of the day, the additional functionality can get in your way when you're in a live session as a voice actor and you may want something simpler. And that's where something that contrasts against it, like the, the Centrance Passport VO, comes into play because you have only what you need without distracting features and no software control panels firmware updates or anything to keep to sort of burden you with complexity so very different ideas to get down a uh, similar functionality that you know might that you might need um moving on so waves some of you may use waves plugins if you do use waves plugins then you already know what i'm about to talk about <laughs> because it made a huge this piece of news made a huge splash and Splash meaning like a poop landing in a bowl of water. Kind of a splash. It, it did not go over well at all. And what they said they were going to do was make all of the licenses from here this day forward be subscription only. You have to have a subscription to get any current or updated version of your software. End of story, full stop. And the people spoke. And Waves listened. Um, and so a week later... They made a total about face, and um, that is no longer going to be the case. You will be able to buy Waves plugins. You can buy them a la carte. You can buy them, and when you do buy them, they are what they call perpetual licenses. And so you're not going to have to have a subscription to continue using Waves plugins that you have already come to know and love and depend upon, like Clarity. So don't freak out. There was a lot of that happening. We don't need to freak out anymore because... They, uh, they really did listen. They really did um, 
pedal it back and uh and they 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 made good they made good so kudos waves i sorry that they made such a misstep in terms of marketing and promotion and kind of decision making in terms of how they would market and sell their product but they listened and they they did change so there you go anyway moving on to a couple more things a couple pair of headphones one of them i got to try at the at the vo atlanta and i have a quick video package that uh we can throw up here and the other one is a pair i actually have physically in my hot little hands from Rode because they were nice enough to give along with the Rodecaster Pro 2 that they uh, they let us take home from Vio Atlanta. They did also give me a pair of their NTH100 headphones. And my quick, quick take on the NTH100 headphones is a beautiful piece of engineering. Really, really nicely made. Um, very comfortable in my, on my ears. But the sound characteristic, the EQ curve is not familiar to me. It's two different from anything else that I own for me to adapt to using or adopt to using them right away. These might be best for me if I was to use them while I'm actually producing a show live. Just like the, the Harlan Hogan cans, I like listening to myself speak through them live, but I wouldn't want to make an EQ judgment when I'm tuning EQ because I know my other headphones better. I feel kind of like the same way about these. They, they have a unique sound to them, and that might be good for a performance or good for people doing live announce, but maybe less or so for editing. It's up to you and it's what you're used to hearing and you have to wear them to find out, but really nicely designed, very heavy duty, removable cord, which I think should be the norm nowadays, right? And, and you can put them on both sides. There's a party trick. They put them on, they put the plug on both sides. Um, cooling gel ear pads which is pretty cool. It, it really does help pull the heat away from your skin. So really interesting cans. I, I'm, I want to play around with them some more. Maybe I'll do some of my live shows with them and see how they work for live production. But um, they just their EQ is just too different for me to use for my critical listening type stuff. And lastly, speaking of headphones, the uh, Audio-Technica ATH M50X-STS uh, has been released recently. A very interesting pair of headphones, and I have a video to accompany that. If you would spool that up, Sue. Uh, hey, this is George the Tech. I'm here at VO Atlanta 2023 inside the Tri Booth, and I'm getting to try something that's new to me. That's really interesting. It's an Audio Technica headphone, the very well loved ATH M50 headphones, with a little extra party trick a boom microphone. Not just any boom microphone capsule, it's the same capsule as in the 20 series microphones. That's right, it's the same capsule as in the AT2020. So now you've got a good quality condenser capsule that's built into your headphones. So think about what you could do with this. You could record audiobooks in a comfortable chair, sitting back, relaxed, not with a microphone uh, that you have to constantly address at the exact right placement. You can be relaxed and record in a comfortable way. You can physically move around while you're recording in very high quality with really high quality audio and get really consistent sound. That's the other thing. Consistent audio as you move around your space. And I think that's a really compelling thing. It's something I've been advocating for for quite a while is why not have a headset mic? when you record voiceover. But most of them weren't up to the task. The fidelity wasn't very good. They're pretty noisy. They're made for sports casting. This one, I think, well, you guys be the judge. I think it works pretty well. Thanks to Eric, who let me borrow these and do this quick little test. And you can mute them at any time by doing this. Now the microphone is off. And now the microphone is on. Really clever design. XLR and quarter inch. That's how it plugs in. So it'll plug into standard pro audio gear. And they have a USB version of it as well, which I'm actually interested in because I work on my laptop constantly and I need high end headphones with a mic. Very clever. Audio Technica killing it with these amazing new headphones with a mic. All right. Yeah. I, I, did you notice the boom microphone mute didn't actually work? It started to, or less, the, or you had a, a, I had some a, a gate on to there. I had to try yeah. to deal with the, the high, high background noise in there. But um, yeah, it, 
it didn't cut it off. So I don't know if I pulled it up, didn't pull it up far enough to mute the mic, but it didn't actually. Do it until it, it clicks. That's usually the indication. I guess that's what it, I guess that would it is. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a, I, first of all, I love all you technical your headphones. I'm a headphone junkie, as you guys have probably figured out by now. And, um, and the fact that you can have a, albeit a very low end condenser capsule, still a quality condenser mic capsule built into the boom of the mic a headset was, I thought, really cool idea. And I think for people doing live podcast or doing a long form narration, e-learning or audiobooks, it, I think it could be really nice to use. Yeah, it'd be comfortable to have that. And then you don't have to worry about constantly, you know, you're getting your mic is in the right position all the time. And, uh, you know, and of course, it's very important for gamers because apparently that's what gamers do. I wouldn't know. I'm yeah, yeah, too old for USB that stuff. They have a USB <laughs> version of this, for, I would say, is definitely gamer suited. So it'll plug directly into a PC or Mac. And I think that, nice. would be, that would be a no brainer. Very good. All right. Well, I, I wanted to talk about something that I always say, and that is mm -hmm. every room is different. If we get down to the basic basics here, I get a lot of email from people saying, hey, what do I do? I have a room. Well, that's great. We all have rooms somewhere, uh, but every room is different. There is no one size fits all answer to creating a home voiceover studio because rooms are made out of different materials. Everybody's voice is different. Everybody's using a different microphone, even though they, you know, I, I, I'm still not convinced that, you know, all these microphone selections really have very little to do with voiceover. It has a lot more to do with with making music and stuff. And there's a few microphones that are really good for doing voiceover. But when it comes to the room, room selection is really, really important because as we know, what, what's my main philosophy, keeping sound out and making sure that there's no reverberation inside the space that you're recording. And of course, proper microphone technique, and setting your levels, setting your levels. I, I think that's going to be a whole new discussion when we start talking about some of the other things that we can, uh, when it comes to voiceover, uh, recording gear, but some rooms have, you know, in old houses, you got walls that are still plaster. Uh, most of them are drywall and they have, some of them have 10 coats of paint on them. You've got to be able to find the right space. One that is quiet. And I've come to the conclusion that is literally impossible in a home studio unless you have an actual booth uh, that really cuts out the exterior noise. Uh, so you've got to find a quiet room, preferably one that is perhaps in the back of your house or apartment, not on the street, uh, not in the landing uh, glide zone for an airport or takeoff. <laughs> Because I know people that are right below the Santa Monica airport. It's like, how do you record here? Um, but if you can enclose yourself in something and seal it up, that's really the key to keeping noise out. And if it's got heavy walls, uh, for those of you living in the east or in the northeast, a basement is a great place. Uh, and you can actually build your own thing down there, your own your own studio, but from scratch. Or if you have a closet in a basement, that also works really great. Just turn off the furnace and all the other mechanicals and make sure you turn them back on when you're done. Um, also, how do you treat a room like that? There's no one size fits all for that as well. When I go into somebody's house or apartment and they're like, what, how's this room? If it's a closet full of clothes, that's fabulous. It's amazing because nothing absorb sound like a closet full of clothes, go into your walk-in closet and start talking and you'll notice it's a lot quieter in there. So make sure you do that. Uh, find the room and learn how to listen for exterior noise. And that really takes just maybe a little bit of Zen time where you go, what can I hear? Can I hear the refrigerator? No one, no one recognizes that the refrigerator is there because your brain's probably tuned it out or air conditioning or heating or all sorts of noises that can happen in an apartment building or in your house. So that's the first thing you got to do is you've got to find someplace really, really quiet. Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, I can use, 
I can use this filter and that filter and those filters. I think if you're doing stuff live, if you have to do a lot of remote sessions and stuff like that, yeah, you have to have that type of stuff if you don't have a quiet space to record. But it's much easier to do auditions and stuff from a place that's really, really quiet. Acoustically treating it, it depends. Generally, I have to listen. That's George, that's like one of the, 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 the weirdest things about what we do. Somebody says, I got a, I got a buzz. I got a hum. I got this I, noise. I've got this thing. And it's like, yeah, so everybody hears differently. And I, I think that's yeah. been proven. Everybody's, you know, their ears are all different. They all perceive things a little bit differently. You use different so, headphones too. So you and, hear things differently than other people in different headphones. Absolutely. So what you need to do is send us something. <laughs> if you have a question about if it sounds good, send George or I some audio because usually while you may not be able to hear it, it takes us five seconds to know what's going on in your room. If it's, if it's noisy, if it's reverberant, if you're not using your microphone properly, all those things we can find out very, very quickly if we hear it, which is why I have the, the specimen collection cup in my, uh, at my website. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, that's, that really is what works. Or if you're working with George, you have to send us the actual audio so yes. we can tell what it is. And generally we can tell if you, if the room is acoustically treated, if it's quiet or if you're in an empty room, um, or if you're in a four by four whisper room with the stock foam that it comes with, which got to listen to that one today again, it sounds like a tube. It sounds pretty, pretty, pretty boxy. Yeah. Not yeah. very good. Yeah. I mean, and everybody describes these things very differently as well. Right. Like, are tinny. you in a tube? Is it tinny? Is it, you know, <laughs> You know, sometimes people have like those lights with a, with a, a bell, uh, sort of housing on it. And they're like, I get this ringing sound. I'm like, do you have one of those lights with the bell? Uh, yeah. Get rid of it. And all of a sudden <laughs> the ringing goes away. <laughs> this That's called experience. That's doing this for a long time and hearing everything that can go on. Um, so it's important to find the quietest space that solves so many problems and prevents us and you from doing a lot of additional stuff to make that room usable. So there's no one size fits all. We got to hear it and we have to see what exactly in here, what exactly is going on in that room, because every room is different. Every voice is different. Mm -hmm. George, your thoughts. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, I start to, after I've heard, after I've heard a 10 or 20 four by four whisper rooms, they're pretty, they're pretty predictable, right? It's a yep. product with the same size. And I start to get an idea of what works in those, right? So I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, but everybody's closet's a different size. Everything has its own unique set of challenges. So it's a very, it's still a very non-formulaic solution. And the other reason for that is, is I've got all these books over here, which you can't see on acoustics. And not a single one of these books has how do you tune a four by four booth or a small closet? Not a one. None of them know how to do this. None of them studied it. None of them have models uh, based in mathematics on how to tune small rooms. It's a unique niche of things that we have spent a lot of time doing our best to perfect. And um, so that's why it's such a unique thing. Yeah. So if you're trying to, trying to set up a room uh, or you're you know, moving or something like that, always look for a room that is really, really quiet or a closet that's big enough for you to actually fit in. <laughs> We've seen some people squashed into some very oh, small spaces. Yeah. Uh, if, you can, if you have an extra room, a spare bedroom, something like that, it can, it can be very, very useful. An outbuilding, you know, you know have mm -hmm. a, maybe you have a she shed. Or, mm -hmm. or a man cave or something like that that's tough away shed. from the street. Yeah, yeah tough shed is great. Uh, something along those lines. If you can isolate yourself from the house and from street noise, that's a great thing. Anyway, we got a lot of questions we're going to get to in the next half hour, so don't go away. we got lots to come here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'll be right back. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 
provide both that accurate transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, another spot. And this time we're talking about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a lot of other tools coming down the pipeline, including their most currently updated version of Nexus, which really allows studios to interact with their clients and their talent in a more seamless way. It's pretty amazing. This tool allows studios or anybody that has to produce and record other talent route audio in and out of their DAWs very painlessly in a very logical way. It's really, really well designed. But honestly, the voice actors out there, you're the ones that really want to pay attention to what's going on with Source Connect. I have a video about it on my website. Um, that goes into a lot of informational depth. I mean, this video has been out since the beginning of the pandemic, three years. People are still watching it, telling them, thank you for doing this video. I now understand it better. Since then, if you go to source-elements.com, they have created a lot of educational content on Source Connect, what it does, who it's for, how it works, how you get it, and what's it cost? Well, it doesn't have to cost anything. To get started, you can get a 15-day free trial, or you can also do what they have. They have a special little two-day license thing. So if you don't want to commit to a subscription or buy out the license for life, yes, you can get these little two-day licenses. Ask them how, and they'll show you. Um, it's a great way to make a client happy when you need to, especially when you don't think you're going to be using it very often. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. Let's get on to those questions right after this next spot. Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in VoiceOver or to change something about your VoiceOver career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in VoiceOver. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. All right, welcome back to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Number 100. Put that up again, sir. That's a lot of tech talk. <laughs> that's 100 hours of tech talk. I mean, where else, where else are you going to get all this stuff, you know? <laughs> and one of the favorite things we do about tech talk is we take your questions. And, sure do. And we got a bunch of them uh, today, so why don't oh, we get into those? Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's one that was left over from last week from, right. from, from Derek Sy. Uh, mm -hmm. Starting out as a voice actor, I have the Audio-Technica AT2020 and a Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen and record in a wardrobe. I think that means a closet. Could be a closet. Or it, could be a, it could be like a Schiffer robe. <laughs> something along <laughs> like they sell those things at uh, at ikea mm -hmm. 
um, with two GIK, GIK acoustic spot panels behind me, with mm-hmm. a curtain to cover the top to treat the space, mm-hmm. with a noise floor of about minus 60 to minus 54 dB, we'll be the judge of that. Uh, I have a gain knob turned up 60 to 70 percent, but my recording levels are around minus 28 to minus 21 dB. Hmm. When you explain what that means. So every time I record, I amplify it plus f- 5 to 7 dB in Adobe Audition. Mm-hmm. Is this just the nature of the mic interface, simply not speaking loud enough, or am I doing something wrong? I have the mic positioned upside down at eye level, about six inches. The hardware is all brand new and the latest drivers installed. Mm-hmm. Uh, chances are, well, Chris, the one, the first question is Mac or PC. He said drivers. That drivers. Means that means drivers. PC. Usually. Okay. Usually. usually. Yeah. I mean, there aren't a lot of drivers for stuff in, in on a Mac. Right. Uh, chances are, there's a number of things that could be going on here. Well, for in 60% when, is not very high on a Scarlet. No, that's true. There's a lot more. You got a lot more gain in there, especially if you've got a third gen. I mean, those things have a lot of gain to them. Uh, Two things that I would suggest. One, not be six inches from the mic. Maybe be three inches to to the mic. Remember the rule of three. If it's a really tiny room, it's a fist. If it's a, you know, a good size room that's, you know, like a, a small bedroom or something, it's a fist and thumbs up. And if you're in a larger room, like the room I'm in, you can do mahalo. Yeah, you can get away with a further distance. The better, the bigger and better sounding the room is, yeah. Exactly, but the room's got to sound good. But yeah. chances are you're, there's two things there. One, you're probably too far from the mic, especially in AT2020, which is not the most sensitive of the studio right. condenser mics. Yeah. And two, you might play with being a little bit closer. And so turn up your game, get a little bit closer, and I'll bet you can get yourself back up to where he should be. What do you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't be afraid to goose up the gain a little bit if it's necessary. Experiment with mic placement and distance. Um, and, but don't be so worried about what the recorded levels look like anymore. With 24-bit recording, you can record raw audio with levels that need to, app, that need to be amplified 5 to 10 dB or even more sometimes and not worry about an, an, an inordinate amount of noise being added to the audio. If the noise is in the environment, well, whatever you do to adjust the levels later will adjust the noise too, right? So whether you add gain from the preamp or normalize later or amplify later, whatever that noise is will also come up. So you're not saving yourself by recording low levels. Um, so it's generally accepted these days with 24-bit. If you're peaking somewhere in the yellow range on the VU meter, your recording meter is in your software. If you're in the yellow, you can kind of let it mellow. You know, don't worry too much. We're going to normalize or boost the level in post and not even worry about um, worry about that as much as we used to with um, 16-bit recording and older um, analog gear. All right. Next question is from Ed Moskowitz. You can get this one because Alrighty. 32-bit float is a, a whole d- interesting discussion. It's but let's getting start a that lot off. of press lately, isn't it? It sure um, is. Ed asks, uh, in regards to the 32-bit float discussion, in film and TV post and production, it has been debated for quite a while. With manufacturers like Sound Devices having the option, many of the studios were, perhaps, that has changed now, not yet capable of dealing with 32-bit float. I'm, seeing, I'm assuming 32-bit float files. Um, so the question is, are more studios now ready to utilize tracks recorded in 32-bit? Um, and production at this stage of the game, a lot of, of file recordings are... Um, uh, a lot of the field... I guess I should say field recordings um, are done in 32-bit. So what's my opinion? Um, well, you need to deliver the files in the format that the client wants. So if you're saying that post isn't wanting 32-bit files, then what you're surmising is, is that no, it's not part of workflow for them yet. They don't want to take 32-bit float files. So if you're recording in 32-bit float, which is fine if you have the technology to properly capture it, which most of you do not yet, but if you have the equipment to record 32-bit float, if your software is capable of doing it and your Mac is set up to record it, because sorry folks, you on PC cannot record and capture in 32-bit float yet, um, then yes, go ahead, 
but deliver the files in whatever format the client wants. So that might be 24-bit WAV. More commonly, that's probably going to be 16-bit WAV files. So um, capture in high resolution, that's fine. Deliver in the resolution that they want. But it is all about production workflow, and until 32-bit float becomes part of it, there's going to be no reason to record in that format. Yeah. But we need to explain what is the difference between 32-bit float and, say, 32-bit and, say, 24-bit. Because whenever you're, you know, you're setting up your file, you hit you know, new file, it'll come up, a dialog box will come up, and it'll say, you want this in you know, 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit, or 32-bit float. Yeah. Which, as you were saying, it it doesn't work on 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 a PC yet. I'm not sure why that is for audition. Yeah. But uh, I mean, you can, it's easy to do an audition. You just record it a 32 bit float. What exactly does that mean? Oh man. Well, 32 bit float is an incredibly complex algorithm of mathematics, which is basically <laughs> saying that um, there's 24 bits roughly of of actual dynamic range, which, by the way, is a lot. <laughs> it's plenty. And then there's eight more bits that will allow you to shift that range of 24 bits up and down as needed, well, essentially allowing it to float up and down. So how it works in context, what it means in context of what we care about is that with the right amount, right type of gear and set up correctly in your, in your DAW and in your computer, you can record without having to worry about mic gain. Um, because the system has the ability to capture such an incredibly wide range of, of sound that the quietest stuff and the loudest stuff is all recorded without distortion or clipping. Um, um, and that's, a, that's the very, very short version of it. If you head over to Rhodes' website, or actually Rhodes' YouTube, type in 32-bit float um, NT1, and watch the most recent videos that they released, and it will do a really good job of explaining this more, more clearly what this whole 32-bit float thing means. But in the short version of it is, if you're not set up with the right gear on a Mac at this time, there is zero reason to record anything in 32-bit float. Don't bother. All you're doing is making bigger files to take up more space. It's extra wasted data. It's totally unnecessary. I still say 24-bit should be the kind of the norm across the board. Um, don't worry about 32-bit float without the right equipment and workflow in your setup. Yeah. I, all right. So I experimented with it this week, mm -hmm. you know, and see, okay, you know, I've been doing it 24 bit for a long time. I'm like, let me try 32. You cannot overmodulate it. <laughs> you know, you, and the thing is, is if you, even if you drive, you know, your, your, your interface, uh, you know, in Adobe what audition, were you using? I was using the roadcaster. Oh, the roadcaster may have 32 bit float recording in it now. I don't know. It, it may be, I, I, uh -huh. but I, 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 you know, I recorded it quiet. I recorded it loud mm -hmm. and it came out fine either way. I think the point is though, you got to have a quiet chain. You have to have a good quiet mic, clean, like a road or a Neumann or something like that. Yep. And an interface that is also very quiet. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and if, if you've got white noise at a low level, if you normalize it to something else, it's still there. It comes up. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. But I, I experimented with it a bit and I must say it sounds pretty good at thirty two bit float. And and then I just delete the thirty two bit float after I send off the MP three. So it doesn't take up room on there. Wow. Next question we have is from the one and only Jeff Holman. He says, My on camera self tape studio has hardwood floors and my self tapes have a You'll hollow. Have to brag, Jeff. Yeah, really. Right. Uh, echoey sound. <laughs> yes, they have a hollow echoey sound. What's the best way to better that, keeping in mind I can't have visible foam or sound panels in the shot? Put a rug down? Would a carpet pad help too? Is there a certain kind of rug or pad that would help the most? I'm not well, a, I'm, yeah, go, go ahead. I, I have some thoughts on it, but you go ahead. Sorry, you go first and I'll go. Okay, Hugo, I'll go first. Uh... <laughs> In, in a voiceover booth, I'd say, you know, people are like, I've got a cement floor. I got a wood floor. Should I put a rug down? Well, if you want, you know, if you're barefoot, maybe. Uh, but I don't think the floor really has a, if, if you've got a solid floor, it's not, it, it's not affecting the sound at all in a smaller booth. In a larger space where you're doing self-taping for, for on-camera work, uh, a rug always helps. 
perhaps mm-hmm. a nice shag rug, although you'll probably end up tripping over some of the shag. Uh, <laughs> it's if not you're too moving, shaggy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something that's got a... If you can diffuse the sound at the floor using something that has a lot of texture to it, that would probably help. Although, if, mm-hmm. you, if, you, if you've ever been to a Grateful Dead concert, they're always on some oriental rug or something like that to make the, the stage not quite as reverberant. Uh, <laughs> and to keep the drums from sliding around. That's right. <laughs> and and I, you know, I think, Jeff, that you know, if you're sending in self-tapes, uh, they know you're in a room. They know you're not in a professional studio. They're looking to see how your acting is more than anything else. So I would say put down a rug. Let's see what it sounds like. And if it doesn't work, then try something else. I would also ask, what is your backdrop, Jeff? I mean, if your backdrop is... Um just the drywall behind you that's or, the worst possible case scenario if the backdrop is a roll down backdrop then you can hide all kinds of stuff behind the roll down backdrop because a lot of the sound is going to pass through the roll down backdrop and it's going to bounce off the wall behind it so you can hang a whole bunch of stuff on the wall behind the roll down backdrop um, you can put stuff everywhere that's not on frame you can put two sets of ferny pads, you know, furniture blankets on stands on either side of the camera. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do to kill off the reverb that doesn't seen, that isn't seen on camera. So, yeah, I would try a lot of these things, just scattering them around, just keeping them out of frame. Um, and it's all going to improve as you add more and more damping to the space. But, yeah, just start with the basics. A nice 5 by 8 8 by whatever room you have for nice a nice plush uh, area throw rug and that's gonna make a big difference because your microphone is likely overhead and pointed down at the hardwood floor right or or use a lav mic so you're you're close mic'd when you're when you're doing a self-taping thing yeah also if you've got remember the camera is only pointing in one direction if you're if it's bouncing off the wall behind the camera you can put all sorts of stuff on the wall behind the camera I'm hearing some ridiculous expectations from actors doing on camera now on camera. Yeah. I, I don't see why you'd have to add worry ever about hiding a microphone, having to worry about it being in frame um, or having a lav mic on one of these new road video mic, go to mics or the DJI mics that you can just attach to your, your, your shirt um, will help a big, big time in getting clean audio without reflection and bounce. So that might at the end of the way be just the easiest way to deal with it. Yeah, that's that's the latest thing. Uh, Rode has that that what is it? The go go the whatever mic. mic. Go, I think it's oh yeah the the Rode just a go mic. The video yeah the right. Rode it's just go a, mic. Right, yeah. it's just a, a thing you clip onto your pocket and yeah you know, and and, and it, it has a uh, wireless to uh, through Bluetooth to your camera or to your yeah. Phone. Well, it has its own receiver. Yeah, um, DJI also has internal recording as well. So if you don't have a way to wirelessly send the audio to your phone easily, it will also just internally record too so yeah there's some really really cool mics in this space nowadays totally wireless and not cheap um but um affordable and if you're doing a lot of this kind of stuff it's part of your career then probably worthwhile investing in yeah but for voiceover you don't need a rug on the floor right unless you're you know a wood floor if you go into a lot of recording studios what's on their floor it's a wood floor so yeah, they're not they're not right. too worried about it. you're not talking down you're talking this way and that doesn't reflect off the floor very much right. unless unless you have like a mirrored floor or something like that that it <laughs> re- reflects light and sound yeah it's it's this holistic thing it's just the re- ratio of hard versus soft surfaces no matter where they are right. you know if they're on the floor the walls even the ceiling um, the more hard surface there is versus soft the worse it's going to get so yep. you got to just start sucking up that reverb wherever you can. No question. All right, we got time for two more questions here. Uh, Jeremy Howard on YouTube says, I have a moving blanket VO booth about 4 by 2.5, so like this. And anybody out there that's more than two and a, they're two and a half feet wide, they're pretty wide. Uh, and while there are no reflections, my male voice does seem to get a bit boomy in the space. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend bass traps and studio foam? And two, is there a setting where I can change the speed of the playback? Well, let's get to the speed of the playback in a second. Okay. Uh, when it comes to boomy, if you're in a blanket booth, and it depends on what, what you're using for blankets here, he doesn't yeah. say, oh, it's moving blankets. Remember, moving blankets, 
definitely will will diffuse and absorb the sound so it doesn't bounce back to your mic. But the sound also goes through. And if you're in a larger room and you're talking very loud, which is another point, everybody's over projecting. You know, unless you're doing car spots or doing imaging or something along those lines, it's it's a conversational voice. You're just talking the way you're talking to somebody else. Uh, maybe a little bit of push with some some scripts. The louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. So yep. that 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 that, that <laughs> <laughs> that's the most important thing there. Uh, your voice may be a bit boomy, and that's because it's reflecting off of walls outside of the booth right it could be and, where the booth is if you st if it's tucked into a corner now the corner of your room is, is covered reverber. with the booth and now right. you're getting some bass reflex off the corner so yeah right. if you can move the thing away from the wall that could help quite a lot you might try that too yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that many times with people with blanket boots it's like mm -hmm. you know maybe have it in the middle of the room or you know away or from at least the wall not in a corner right Cor the thing corners are practical but that's where the base really tends to collect right because you've got you've got like a bunch of angles there say at the ceiling where it's going off in two different directions there and then you've got the ceiling and then the down you know yeah it, the waves will really collect in that corner and that will cause yeah. that so you know or you could always put a base trap up in the corner you might could actually try that. help that yeah i've never yeah. put a base trap in a in a blanket booth because normally like you said you can move the booth Right. But if you're stuck in a corner, that that may be what it takes. You might need to get something in that corner to suck up some of that low end resonance, or just use some cleverly tuned EQ to sort of tune it out a little bit, because that actually can work quite effectively too. Yeah. So yeah, I've I've you know that's the great thing about a about a blanket booth that's made out of PVC or something like that. You just move it around, find the sweet spot in the room that's going to work for you. You know, think about it. There's no, there's no, again, one, no one size fits all thing here. There's lots of different things you can try. And these are all things that George and I have tried 20 or 30 times in different people's rooms, like move the booth. All right. Talk, you know, okay. The noise is coming from this way. Don't talk towards the noise or don't talk with the noise behind you. Turn it around, talk towards the noise. It, you know, it's simple, you know, logical stuff. Uh, second part of his question. This is an interesting one. I, I, I'm pretty sure there is. Is there a setting where I can change the speed of playback in Adobe Audition if I'm proofing a script for accuracy mm. and want to do it quickly? Uh, mm. I'm pretty sure you can compress it, but I don't think you could. I mean, if you want to, you can just slide along and, and scrub along. And uh, No, I know. You can scrub. Um, I, I did, I, I'm doing literally doing some Googling about it because I've never done it. I've seen, oh, now, now they want me to log in to read what I just saw in a Google search. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, someone said, um, check in ed edit preferences playback, and in the line saying JKL shuttle speed, select the half speed option, and now you can play anything either forwards at half or backwards at half speed, or you could do double the speed too, apparently. Yeah. So J makes it playback. Let's see. L makes it play forward at whatever speed you choose. J will make it play backwards at whatever speed that you choose. So it looks like you have to try it for yourself and see. I've never done it, but if these Google searches are coming up with accurate information on the Adobe Support Community site, which this has been marked as a correct answer, um, this is from 2017. App, Adobe Audition is not known for removing features. Right. So I would imagine it's still the same thing now. Yeah. Now, there's also software that's going to make audio editing even easier that we saw it at VO Atlanta and that's Hindenburg. Give that, give that a look because that's got some really cool stuff that allows you to yeah. really edit with the script right in front of you. And it makes it very easy to, to do that. And I think with a couple of keystrokes, it just sort of edits with the script, which is really good if you're doing e-learning with lots of different slides or with audio books or something along those lines. But we'll talk more about that in a future show. Uh, last question from YouTube from Dave G. We can answer this one pretty quickly. I'm worried about AI voices. Hold my hand and tell me it'll be okay. Please, guys. There is so much written about this. I, you know, if, if you understand the term uncanny valley, uh, these companies keep saying that 
there it's getting real close and people say that they can you know imitate emotion i'm sorry i still don't buy it and people are going to laugh at me there's no program out there that can make the thousands of decisions that might can go on in my head when i see a phrase how am i going to go up go down programming that to what would be a, a model of my voice is very difficult yeah. now in the aggregate here in the big picture in the macro we pretty much are all agreed that it's going to take away some of the low end stuff that's monotonous like uh phone uh, phone uh, uh, what do you uh, avi things uh mm -hmm. phone answering uh things and, and voice systems yeah. like that audiobooks are going to it but you know i've listened my wife listens to audiobooks and i'm like that's an ai voice i can tell real easily they can say that you know you see these things with deep fakes like which one is the real Morgan Freeman? It's not hard. But if you're not really trained for it, you, won't, you don't really notice. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that some of the low-end, low-paying stuff may go the way of AI. Certainly, yeah. there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that have gone AI. But I, you know, I think it's important, and, and John Bailey was telling us this a couple of weeks ago, be ready for it. Be prepared. Know, which, know what it is you do well that an AI can't and really try to exploit that. There you have it. And that's the name of that tune. <laughs> All right. As Robert Blake used to say before he went to prison. Um, anyhow, uh, we've got uh, just a few more things to tell you about, but we'll tell you about them when we come back right after these important commercial messages. Don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online session, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All righty. You know, as a voice actor, everybody needs to have a website. At World Voices, we require that you have a web footprint. That means you need to have a website. But a web, getting a website, if you've gone to all sorts of webmasters to say, yeah, I can build a website for you, it can take a while. You, gotta get a, you have to find a, a server and, and, and a host for it and all these things that perhaps you have no idea about. Well, a good friend of mine, Joe Davis, came up with something really simple, and that is a way to build your voiceover website in just minutes using a new website called voiceactor.com. And you can build your website in minutes. It has some really cool features to it. For example, it's, it's designed to be mobile responsive. It, you know, your voiceover website will work on all devices and it'll show you both views. It's easy to use. The dashboard is built to allow you to create your site really fast. George and I did it in 10 minutes and got sites up and running. Uh, edit yourself. Their super simple editor lets you manage your own website. Always a pain in the butt that, you know, if you want to add a comma or change the background color, yeah, I'll get that. will be, that'll be 50 bucks for a web page. No, you have complete control because it's all templated. And guess what? It was built for voice actors by voice actors. We all put input into what makes it good. And that's what you need. You need to find a website that can build your website, simple, easy, and you can do it for free to start out. That's right. They get, they allow you to do for a, for zero dollars a month. You get a site URL. You get to choose your website, uh, the, the website template, uh, change templates at any time. It's easy to edit, no coding. 
It's super duper simple. Go over to voiceactor.com and try it out. See if it works for you. If you don't have a website, you better get one now. Go over to voiceactor.com. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the chance to learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for, for a living. living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Well, another hour has gone by, and look how much you've learned in that one hour. We shoved, <laughs> it's like taking a fire hose and giving you all this information, lots of stuff in there. Uh, next week on the show, another great guest. I have a couple of people that want to be on the show, and you're going to enjoy hearing from them, so make sure you're there uh, April, let's see, it's April 3rd, so the seven, seven days, so I think it's the 20th we're going to be on again, doing it live. Anyway, uh, we need to thank our donors of the week, like Robert Leedham. Thank you, Robert. We yeah. love you. Um, Stephen Chandler. <laughs> Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Greg Thomas. Hey, Dr. Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Reeder. No, it's Ryder. It's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care. Um, Shauna Pennington Bear. <laughs> Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And, and Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. All right. Remember, if you got to, if you want help with your home voiceover studio, look, you can watch our show, but you can talk to us each individually and we can help you out with any question by going to one to my voiceover site, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com or George the dot tech where you've got. Well, we got a discount code. We always do guys. VOBS fan 10 will get 10% off anything you buy on George the dot tech webinars tech support, sound checks, studio, whatever, whatever you need, it's on there and use that code to get 10% off. And if you're watching this show now in replay, we are just announcing the way to pre-order the new Centrance Passport VO and all that information will be over at the Pro Audio Suite, S-U-I-T-E dot com. All righty. Need to thank our sponsors, of course. Without them, we would just have a show without sponsors. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Source Elements. V uh, VoiceOver Extra. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And WorldVoices.org, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Join today. Join us in Orlando on May 5th through the 7th. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for really getting it together in the chat room tonight and on Facebook and on YouTube and wherever else there's a chat room. Uh, and Sue Merlino for being here and making sure that everything looks like a professional TV show, which it sort of is. And, and of course, say, go, go ahead. ahead, go, no, go ahead. No, I we got to thank Lee you. Penny for being <laughs> Lee Penny. <laughs> yeah, I stepped on you from the Lee Penny thing, but I want to say if there's, there's one more way you can support our show. Yeah. If you decide that the passport VO is for you, you really want to get this new interface, please use VOBS when you're given a, a coupon code area on the website, when you check out over at Centrance's website, use VOBS and we will get credit for that. And, you know, it's a way of thanking us for sending you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for coming in or clicking in or tuning in or whatever they call it on the internet thingy this day, this day, these <laughs> days. Uh, but you got to realize something. We talk about audio all the time. That's really what George and I spend a lot of our time doing is making sure your audio sounds the way it's supposed to sound like, what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. 
But the bottom line is, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Yeah, baby. All right. We'll see you next week. Tech Talk, Tech Talk. Tech Talk.